<laughs> Hi. Okay, so believe it or not, I've actually been playing piano for over eight years now. You can say I'm a pretty good piano player. Um, there's a whole other story behind all this thing, so bear with me. The thing that you have just heard may seem quite discordant and odd to you. It's because that it's not the usual classical music that you're used to listening to. It's actually called atonal classical music, which I was literally forced to invent. In life, there are many rules, glass ceilings say, that we have to follow. However, glass can always be broken. Let me tell you a story of my own journey where I have broken some of my own glass ceilings. I've always been in love with music ever since I was a kid. Um, and I don't really think that I'll be able to live if you take it away from me. However, um, I have my teachers here, I'm sorry, but my love towards music did not really apply for my academic studies at all. I wasn't a bad student, but I wasn't a good student at all. So you can say I was pretty going on in the middle. However, that kind of changed at the beginning of this year. In the beginning of this year, as IB students, we were asked to come to school so we could start the curriculum ahead of the others. In the middle of the summer, like literally, in the middle of the summer, I'm standing right in front of the class, sweating the hell out of myself, trying to understand what my teacher has been trying to tell me for the next 30 minutes. And the thing is, I have always hated maths, and I don't know why, I don't know how, what, while I always got fives and fours on other courses, I would also <coughs> always get threes and twos on maths. I don't know why, I don't know how. However, in that exact day, sitting in front of the class, while being sweated the hell out of myself, after sitting there about a good amount of 30 minutes, you start to understand what the teacher has been rambling, rambling about. So basically, the things that were being told, like Fibonacci sequences, Mulder arithmetic, and Golden ratio sparked something in my head. I started to like it, and it was quite funny for me because maybe it, it was because it, it didn't really involve letters, but numbers. At the end of that day, I had two things that I really enjoyed, two disciplines that I really liked. One of them being music, and the other being maths. As a person, I really wanted to combine those two things and see what I could do. So. I went on Google, um, typed in positive sciences with arts in order to find someone, something uh, who had the same mind as I did. So the thing I came up with was almost <coughs> absolutely nothing. However, there was these two guys. One of them is the most famous uh, artist, engineer, architect, whatever you call him, Leonardo da Vinci. He, you may know him for his most famous painting called Mona Lisa. Now, Mona Lisa consists of a, a really high mass, and that's golden ratio. In order to create this wonderful piece, he used golden ratio in order to create a wonderful woman with right ratio. So he took maths with arts and combined them. And there was this other guy, Bella Bartok. Now I love this guy. I don't. Um, his name is well, like Bella Bartok, and he's a Macedonian composer. He, he used Fibonacci sequences and expressed them with half notes in his melodies, in his pieces, which was quite funny for me because I used to play his pieces, but I didn't know that he combined maths with art, uh, maths with music. Is getting inspiration from him, I just decided to dwell into more Fibonacci sequences. So, what are exactly Fibonacci sequences, you may say? They are basically a group of numbers that are being formed by addition. You would just add the number that's before the number and goes on and on and on into <coughs> infinity. Well, if I were to take these sequences and convert it to music, I have to put an end to that sequence because it's too long and it goes to infinity. However, in that exact day, in that exact summer day, there was another subject we had learned and it was called modular arithmetic. So, modular arithmetic is something that's really easy and you guys, yourselves, use it in your daily life, which is really funny. Let's say that we have two clocks. 
One of them is a digital clock, and the other is a normal clock. In the digital clock, it says 13, right? The time is 13. When it translates to normal clock, it will be 1, because there's no 13 in a normal clock. That's basically what modern arithmetic is. It takes basis from a number and accepts it as the highest value. In a clock, in a normal clock, our highest value is 12. So, if I can limit the sequences that goes on to infinity with modern arithmetic, I could probably, <coughs> you know, convert it to music. With that, I decided to take modern arithmetic with sequences and write them down, like list them down, like 1, 1, 2, 2, until 11, 11. Now, the things I realized after looking a, like this a good amount of time, one of them <coughs> was that some sequences had other sequences in itself, so they were in a cycle. For example, this sequence had this sequence in itself, and th this sequence had this sequence in itself, and subsequently they, had, uh, they were in a cycle. So basically, if I were to take those sequences and convert to music, I could have a nice long length piece, right? That's what we all thought. However, there was a second thing that I realized which kind of blew me away. Um, one of uh, the thing was that these sequences had same numbers in them. However, these numbers were not just only numbers, they were prime numbers. Now, this may seem a little math geeky for you, but bear with me, you're on a sense really easy. Prime numbers are the numbers that cannot be divided by any other number by themselves. So basically, I had four sequences like this, which consisted of same numbers that were prime numbers. We understand that, so, great. <laughs> if I see the same numbers in different sequences, I would have the same notes if I were to come right into music, right? So I could have written a piece consisting from one tone. At least that's what I thought. Whatever. <laughs> now, you may say, a piano does not consist of 12 keys, right? But, uh -huh, I got you there. Um, when you count the white keys, you'll have 8 notes. And when you add the black keys, which are 4, you'll have 12 notes. Brilliant, right? So, we have written the sequences according to Modular 12. And now we have 12 notes. So basically, I can just take the sequence and convert it to music, right? Really easy. So, before doing that, I decided to give the no every single note a complementary number in order to convert it like really easily. So, C, C starting from C, C sharp until B, I gave the uh, num I gave the notes complementary numbers: zero, one, eleven, eleven, like eleven. And then at the end, I had this wonderful melody. Now, this is when it gets dramatic. When I look, to look at the melody, the melody does not make any sense because it's not consisting of a tone. Why? Because the numbers in the sequences are just so scrambled out and they're just so random that when you convert it to music, it doesn't make any sense. So the melody I had was, doesn't consist of a tone. What you call it? It's atonal, right? However, if you were to tell that you were going to have an atonal piece, classical piece, to be honest, in a music community, they would probably laugh at you. Now, this was a huge glass for me to break. <coughs> However, I decided to ignore those thoughts and be the first person who did this. So, I decided to take this melody and convert it to a piece. The piece that you have just heard may seem quite disordered and bad to you. It's because it does not consist of a tone. It's actually called an atonal uh, classical music. I had many glass ceilings to break, one of them being combining positive arts with music, and the other being creating an atonal classical piece, which was not, still is not, accepted in the music community. <coughs> I have worked on some of my glass ceilings, and to be honest, they made me who I am today. I wonder if you can find your own glass ceilings, and I really do wonder if you can break your own glass ceilings too.
Thank you.